Hi, I'm Jason. This video is about distributional preferences. Distributional preferences are preferences that relate to the relative amount of money or resources each person gets or has. It is often easy to incorporate distributional preferences into economic analysis, as they are a natural extension of how economists think about individuals' preferences. We can extend to other people the typical assumption that a person cares about their own material outcomes. We will examine two types of distributional preferences, altruism and inequality aversion. Altruism is concern for the outcomes of others. To incorporate altruism, we simply need to provide a positive weight to the utility of others in the utility function. An example utility function might be utility of our agent I, which is a function of the outcome for agent I and the outcome for agent J equals the outcome for agent I plus alpha times the outcome for agent J, where UI is the utility of agent I, XI, the outcome for agent I, and XJ, the outcome for agent J. Alpha is some number greater than zero. Altruism might have different drivers. For example, the agent might exhibit pure altruism, where the agent has a genuine concern for others' well-being. Alternatively, the agent might exhibit impure altruism. They experience a warm glow about doing good without actually caring about the other's well-being. Altruism, however, is insufficient to explain some experimental results, such as those in the ultimatum game. While it could predict non-zero offers by the proposer, it does not predict the rejection of any offers by the responder. Rejection harms both the responder and the proposer. The proposer could only reject if a negative weight was applied to either their own or the proposer's outcome. An alternative distributional preference model that may explain some of these results is inequality aversion. The idea behind inequality aversion is that people may have a dislike of having less than other people and a dislike of having more than other people. One basic model of inequality aversion comes from the utility function in Fair and Schmidt, 1999. It is of the following form. The utility of agent I, which is a function of the outcome for agent I and the, and the outcome for agent J, equals the outcome for agent I minus alpha times the max of the outcome for agent J minus the outcome for agent I and zero minus beta times the max of the outcome of agent I minus the outcome of agent J or zero. The three terms in this function represent first, the utility of their own outcome, xi. Second, their dislike of having less than the other agent, where alpha is greater than zero. And third, their dislike of having more than the other agent, where beta is greater than zero. Typically, alpha is greater than beta, as people dislike having less than others, dislike having less than others more than they dislike having more than others. We could also set beta is less than zero for an agent that likes to be better off than others. This utility function has a kink at xj, where agent i moves from having less to more than agent j. If, zero, if beta lies between zero and one, as in this diagram, the utility of agent i, u of xi, continues to increase in xi above xj, but at a decreasing rate as inequality degrades the benefit of having more. We can examine the Fair and Schmidt model in the context of the ultimatum game. Suppose two players of the ultimatum game have fair Schmidt preferences. What offers X would the responder reject where the proposer has $10 to split between them? If the responder rejects, the payoff to the proposer and responder is zero. That is XP equals XR equals zero. If the responder accepts, the responder receives X and the proposer keeps the remainder. That is XP equals 10 minus X and XR equals X. The responder will accept if the utility of accepting is greater than the utility of rejecting. That is, they will, they, they will uh, accept if you, the utility responder of accepting is the greater than the utility for the responder of rejecting. If we substitute in the fair Schmidt utility function, that means if they accept XR minus alpha times max of XP minus XR and zero, minus beta times max of XR minus XP and zero is greater than zero. If we substitute in the, then the payoffs when they accepted, then X minus alpha times max of 10 minus X minus X 
0.0 minus beta times max of x minus 10 minus x and 0 is greater than 0. And finally, if we simplify that, that means that x minus alpha times max of 10 minus 2x and 0 minus beta times max of 2x minus 10 and 0 is greater than 0. If the offer is more than $5, the alpha term is multiplied by 0, and the inequality becomes x minus beta times the max of 2x minus 10 or 0 is greater than 0. And as 2x minus 10 is greater than 0, that, that, that simplifies to x minus beta, 2x minus 10 is greater than 0. And we can split this up to be 1 minus beta x plus beta 10 minus x is greater than 0. We can see that this will always hold for any beta less than 1. Recall that, that if beta is less than 1, the responder has higher utility from a higher payoff, but at, but at a decreasing rate when they have more than, more than the proposer. In this case, if beta is less than 1, the responder will always accept offers greater than $5. If the offer is less than $5, the beta term is multiplied by 0 and the inequality becomes x minus alpha times max of 10 minus 2x and 0 being greater than 0, as 10 minus 2x is greater than 0 when, when, when the offer is less than $5. That simplifies to x minus alpha times 10 minus 2x is greater than 0. And again, we can split this up to to see sort of, I guess, what conditions it is greater than zero, that becomes one plus alpha times x minus alpha 10 minus x is greater than zero. Now, whether this holds depends on the value of alpha and the size of the offer x. Is alpha, if alpha is equals a half, then one plus a half times x minus a half 10 minus x being greater than zero, that simplifies to two x minus five being greater than zero, which simplifies to x being greater than 2.5. So a responder with alpha equals a half will reject any offer under $2.50. We can plot the utility function for this game as the size of the offer increases. As the offer is not independent of the proposer's payoff, I will derive the shape of the utility curve as a function of, of xr. The utility of the responder is a function of xp and xr, which equals xr minus alpha max of xp minus xr and zero minus beta max xr minus xp and zero, which equals substituting in the uh, payoffs, x minus alpha max of 10 minus 2x and zero minus beta max of 2x minus 10 and zero. We can also write this as the utility of the responder given payoffs xp and xr equals one plus two alpha times x minus 10 alpha, if x is greater than or equal to zero, and one minus two beta times x plus 10 times beta if, if x is less than zero. The slope of each of these curves is twice that we saw earlier as any increase in outcome for the responder is matched by a decrease in outcome for the proposer and vice versa. This diagram shows the responder's utility curve as a function of the offer x. Player two would reject any offer below amount there x bar. The slope of the curve Below five is one plus two alpha and above five, where the responder is getting more than the proposer, the slope is one minus two beta. For high enough beta, the slope of that part of the curve could be negative. Charnas and Rabin, 2002, developed a more general utility function that captures the possible forms of distributional preference. An agent's attitude toward others depends on their relative position. The utility function is the utility for agent I given payoff to, to agent I and the payoff to agent J equals rho times xj plus one minus rho xi if xi is greater than or equal to xj and sigma xj plus one minus rho xi if xi is less than xj. And in this case, xi is the payoff to player I and xj is the payoff to the other player. Rho and sigma capture the agent's attitudes towards others. When the agent is ahead, the other player's welfare enters their utility via rho. When the agent is behind, the other player's welfare enters the agent's utility via sigma. For most people, rho is greater than sigma. They give more weight to others' utility when they are better off. Sigma can also be less than zero. If they are behind someone, they place negative weight on further gains by that person. Consider the following example. A dictator has less than the other player. 
they their their sigma equals negative a ha. They have less than the other player, so so sigma is the relevant parameter here. They must decide between the allocations one zero that is one for themselves and zero for the other, or five for themselves and one for the other. They calculate the utility of each option. The utility of of one uh, one zero is alpha is sigma times one plus one minus alpha times zero, which equals minus a half times one plus one plus a half times zero equals minus a half. The utility of the this, of the allocation five one equals sigma times five plus one minus sigma times one, which equals minus a half times five plus one plus a half times one, which equals minus one. They prefer to allocate one zero, even though it is worse for them because it is also worse for the other player. Sigma being less than zero can also account for the rejection of low offers in the ultimatum game. The Charnas and Rabin model can capture many forms of distributional preferences. Some are as follows. If sigma lies between one and zero, the, the agent is altruistic. A higher payoff to the other player increases the agent's utility. If one is greater than or equal to rho, which is greater than or equal to zero, which is greater than or equal to sigma, the agent is inequality averse. If the other player has more, the agent's utility decreases with further gains for the other player. If the other player has less, the agent's utility increases with further gains for either agent. If sigma, if, if, if zero is greater than or equal to rho is greater than or equal to sigma, the agent is status seeking. They gain more utility by having more than the other player. The utility goes up when either they get more or the other player gets less. If sigma equals rho, which equals zero, uh, we are left with the classical self-interested utility function. The agent only cares about their own payoff. If rho equals one and sigma equals zero, that means the utility of uh, xi, the utility of the agent i given xi and xj equals the minimum of xi or xj. That is the agent has Rawlsian preferences whereby the agent seeks the greatest benefit for the least advantaged. And if, if rho equals sigma equals a half, that is utility of agent i as a function of xi and xj equals simply xi plus xj, the agent has utilitarian preferences whereby the agent seeks to maximize total utility. As an example, consider this version of the trust game that we considered in an earlier, earlier video. I considered whether Linda should invest in Marco's startup. Linda is looking for investment opportunities. She identifies a promising crypto-based startup created by Marco. Marco is looking for seed funding. Linda can invest $10. If Linda invests, her investment will triple in value. Marco then can then decide whether to either shut down the startup and keep the $30 or maintain the startup in the market and pay a $15 dividend to each of Linda and himself. If Linda does not invest, Linda keeps the $10. The startup gets nothing. Marco, who is effectively playing a dictator game, would shut down and keep the $30. As a result, Linda would not invest. Suppose now that Linda and Marco have Charnas and Rabin style preferences as follows. Linda's utility is a function of her payoff and Marco's payoffs equals a third, a third times the payoff to Linda plus two thirds times the payoff to Marco if Linda's payoff is greater than Marco's and two thirds times the payoff to Linda and a third times the payoff to Marco if Linda's payoff is less than Marco's. Marco's utility is a function of Linda's and his payoff equals three quarters times the payoff to Linda plus a quarter times the payoff to Marco if Marco has more than Linda and simply equals Marco's payoff if Marco has less than Linda. In this case, UM and UL, capital L and capital, so capital UL, capital UM are Linda and Marco's utility functions. XL and XM are the outcomes for Linda and Marco. Both Marco and Linda give positive weight to the payoff of the other in most circumstances, except for Marco, who only cares about himself when he is behind Linda. Marco and Linda know each other's utility functions. What is the equilibrium of the trust game with these distributional preferences? If Linda chooses trust, Marco has a choice between $15 each and $30 for himself. Marco calculates the utility of each option. The utility to Marco of the distribution of 15 and 15 equals three quarters times 15 plus a quarter times 15, which equals 15. The utility to Marco 
of zero for Linda and 30 for himself is three quarters times zero plus a quarter times 30, which equals 7.5. Marco receives higher utility by paying the dividend to Linda. Linda also has utility from each distribution. Utility to Linda from the distribution of 15 each equals a third times 15 plus two thirds times 15, which equals 15. Whereas the utility to Linda of Marco keeping the money for himself and Linda getting nothing equals two thirds times zero plus a third times 30, which equals 10. So Linda would prefer that Marco pay a dividend. For the other node of the game, if Linda does not invest, she'll keep $10. Marco will have nothing. The utility of Marco in that case it equals 10, 10 of, of getting 10 zero equals zero, whereas the utility of Linda equals a third times 10 plus two thirds times zero, which equals 3.33. Putting those payoffs into the extensive form of the game, we get the following. In this game, Marco can return a dividend for utility 15 or shut down for utility 7.5. He chooses to return the dividend. As a result, Linda will invest for utility 15 rather than not invest for utility 3.33.